Terry Lynn, traveling artista. I have been to IOPS and back. I'm in North Carolina right now. You can hear the birds singing. I love being out on the deck when I'm working. Today, I want to talk a little bit about how to get back to the easel. I mean, it's been at least two weeks since I've done any painting or drawing. I did do some sketchbook drawing. Lynn Deffenbach and I went out one day in Old Town in Albuquerque and we did some sketching and we had a great time. But I need to get back to the easel. I need to do some great things. I just got notification from a show that I didn't make it in. Disappointment, it always happens, it happens to all of us. But then I find myself recovering faster and I told myself, what's next? And what's next is organizing myself, getting ready for upcoming workshops, to offer those workshops, to plan, to paint, and to just find more of myself in my art. That's my goal. So, last night I was sitting, I organized a lot of my photos. I've taken a lot of photos on my trip and done, like I said, a little bit of sketching, but now's the time to loosen that up and to internalize it. I have a red back talk out here right now. Um, so I've organized the photos that I want to work with. This morning I got up first thing after a cup of espresso. I took a walk, try to get some air, breathe deeply, get that energy flowing. Um, here I got a large board. I just have newsprint because I don't want to take this seriously. This is just some exercises, like walking was. It's to get me back, to allow the creative in energy to start through me again. And that's what this is going to be all about. To take a little bit of time, warm up, and get that creative energy flowing again. Now over here, I have my iPad. When I saw people using this at first, I'm like, oh, I don't really like to use that. I do like to use sketches mostly, but this is a great little tool to help you get going with some photos that you've taken. Always try to work from your own photos. He just flew off. <laughs> so exciting. Over here, I have um, my charcoals, my vine charcoals and a little bit of compressed charcoal, a variety. I like variety. I like big sticks. I noticed, look, it's still in the package. I'm not going to do that. First thing I'm going to do is take it out. And uh, these will be available for me to work. Sometimes I use them full size. I rarely use the tip. I usually use the whole side, as you'll see. So, here we go. I'm going to do some sketching and I'm going to take you along with me. So, you just jump right into it. I'm partially in here. I'm looking at some photos on my iPad. I have quite a collection. And I look over my non-drawing hand. You don't want to be looking over the shoulder or the elbow of the hand you are creating with because that just gets in your way. You're more open to your subject and to your drawing if you keep it on the opposite side of your drawing hand. So do keep that in mind. It's a very helpful turn out t uh, hint <laughs> that I learned way, way back in the Academy. keep looking at it, trying to study it. This point I am studying and figuring out what my image is doing. So I keep referring to the original photo or the subject matter that I'm looking at. Later on when I work on a painting, I will focus more eventually on the finishing the painting itself and making it work as a cohesive unit. Here I do another one. This is quick, but just to show you. Okay, I just got to a point where I realized, oh, that's why I don't use newest print much. I don't like the way it feels and works. Each of us have our own surfaces that we like to work with, so I'm switching it up. I am moving to my Canson um, recycled sketch paper. I like this better. Um, there's a number of things like that. It's kind of like a bond paper, so it has a little bit of a tooth and uh, much better to work on than newsprint and not so expensive that it's precious. 
Anyway, I have my iPad. I have hundreds of photos on here. I just skim through until I find something that kind of hits me, and then I try sketching it out. So, let's see. Fun, fun, fun. Oh, there's some skulls. These are cow skulls. So, I find the basic shape, the proportions, the relationships coming across to them that way. I think about the angles. Um, okay, the width here to the width there. Really fascinating. I always loved from college on the bones because my um, professors would bring in bones and there was a skull and I'm not sure if it was um, an actual human skull or a reproduction back then. This was a long time ago so things were a bit different. So form, simple shading to help support the form. Okay. And this is not a finished drawing. I have to keep reminding myself. It's just a warm-up sketch. So the professor would bring it in, and we would sketch it. There's something about bones. Some people don't like them, uh, think they're gross or something, but they're actually beautiful. I mean, you wonder why Georgia O'Keeffe painted them as well. There's a convex and a con concavity and a convexity and it goes from one into the other and um, flowing like like waves on an ocean it's just beautiful in my estimation now I'm gonna little some negative space here rounding around that cheekbone then out to the teeth underneath so this is like the teeth area that's in shadow and uh, just a quick sketch of some bones. And now I'm not really interested in the image at this point. I'm interested in getting my hand and eye coordination working again. Just feeling how things are working. Get that flow going. Interesting nasal area here. A lot of people try to draw um, portraits or animals without understanding the structure. You need to know the structure. What's the bones underneath? What are the muscles doing? What are the tendons doing as you put it all together? So try to do some sketching. Go find some anatomical illustrations and work with those to get an idea what's going on. Now I'm not expecting this to be great because again I haven't painted or drawn for a while so that's not what it's all about. See how much easier this paper works than that um, newsprint. It helps me do more what I want to do. Anyway there's just one little skull that was kind of fun friend of mine was kind of looking at skulls and considering taking one home so I saw these for sale on the street so I took a shot and sent her a text and like hey do you want me to grab one for you and bring it to Maine and she decided not at this time that looks like it's not that actually goes out and this comes in and around okay not perfect but I'm warming up and that's what's important let's try something else this is the image that I'm seeing on my iPad, just showing you so you have some idea. I like the way the light and the design work, so playing around with this. <laughs> I do like drawing in charcoal. I love how quick it works, how flexible it is. It's just one of my favorite medium. Here's another one. Again, looking at the design, exploring the shapes, the composition, the values and how it all ties together. Sketching helps us prepare for a finished painting. Well, I, not any great masterpieces, but I'm getting into it. I'm experiencing it. I'm getting those creative juices flowing again. By going bigger, it helps loosen me up. 
that helps a lot and by doing it quickly that helps. So I have some things, maybe some sketches I can work off from. A little bit of tonality, you know, my values are interesting, some interesting shapes. Same with the other one. This was a house that was beside our Airbnb in um, Santa Fe when we spent a little time there. I just, it was up on the hill, was a neighbor's house beside us, and I like how the light, especially when a storm came in, and working with those lights and shadows, and I'm going to play around with that, and I think I might be able to do something pretty fun. So um, that's got me going. I'm a mess now, just totally covered with charcoal, and it's time for lunch. So I'm going to go check on that, and uh, remember, just keep creating, keep experimenting, and keep growing, and stay dusty, my friends. So here's the first of those sketches. I like this one. I'll come back to it probably. And the second one. This one really energized me. I love those diagonals and the light happening in this. So I choose this one. I set it up beside me. I look at it. It's off to my left side again away from my creating hand so my arm doesn't get in the way. And I just start laying in the basic sketch with charcoal and then bringing in some pan pastel to help set my darks and my lights. This is one of the first steps and then I keep pushing it and trying to bring it all together, bringing in a little more color, a little more dynamism. And at this point this is where the painting stands, but I don't think I'm finished yet. I'm going to set it aside a few days and then come back to it and make any minor adjustments that I feel it might need. Anyway, this is a quick approach. You can do this. Sketch, 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 plan, design, and then move into your paintings. It's a great way, especially if you're working large. This is a 16 by 20 painting and I wanted to spend some time on it. Keep creating. Any comments below are very welcome. Send me some love and please subscribe and share this with your friends. Thank you.